Hello and welcome. Very good afternoon. You're watching The Big Story with me, Afrida Rahman Ali. We are looking at two factors that the city of Delhi is facing. The cause of the massive spike in the pollution levels and is that the reason why the COVID numbers are suddenly on a steady rise. Remember, the death toll has gone beyond 100 in terms of of the last 24 hours death toll that has become a major cause of concern the chief minister addressed a press briefing earlier today saying that it is because of pollution that we are seeing the, these numbers and it is because of stubble burning that has contributed majorly to the pollution in the city so we will look at the various aspects of this twin challenge that the city of delhi is faced with 104 fatalities in the last 24 hours this is the highest single day rise in in the number of COVID deaths since the month of June. So referring to the spike, Delhi CM has said that the rise in infection is low, solely because of the massive rise in pollution and thereby he also brings in the contribution of stubble burning from the adjoining states once again, pointing out to the fact that enough is not being done to give alternative to farmers. He has even given a breakdown of the cost that it would be for the state governments to give the farmers an alternative, something that can be easily done, but is not being done. That is the word coming out of uh, the chief minister of Delhi at this point. He, however, assures that the situation will get better in the next 10 to 15 days. Remember, the tally has crossed the 4 lakh mark. 7,053 fresh cases reported in the last 24 hours. Let's quickly first listen in to what the CM had to say earlier today. साल के इस वक्त अक्टूबर नवंबर के टाइम में पराली जलने की वजह से धुआं दिल्ली में आता है धुआं पूरे उत्तर भारत में फैल जाता है जिसकी वजह से खूब पोल्यूशन होता है और लगभग एक महीने तक पूरा उत्तर भारत दिल्ली पंजाब उत्तर प्रदेश हरियाणा ये पूरे चारों तरफ धुआं ही धुआं होता है अभी दिल्ली के अंदर करोना बढ़ रहा है और इस करोना के बढ़ने का सबसे बड़ा कारण इस टाइम प्रदूषण है दिल्ली के लोगों ने कोरोना पे काबू पा लिया था पिछले महीने तक लगभग 20 अक्टूबर तक हम कोरोना हमारा कंट्रोल में था लेकिन अब जिस तरह से पोल्यूशन बढ़ रहा है उसका एक बड़ा कारण और भी बहुत सारे कारण है एक बड़ा कारण पोल्यूशन भी है जिस तरह से कोरोना बढ़ रहा है my colleague alok singh joining us live alok my first big question to mr kejriwal would be that has he done his bit to curb pollution, if that is what he thinks is the major re uh, reason for it. Uh, the big promises made about increasing buses, has that been fulfilled? I also want to know, have the restrictions been eased out in Delhi, Alok, way too early? Because malls, markets, shopping centers seems to be full of people. No limit in terms of footfall is set. And therefore, uh, would it be then fair to solely blame this on stubble burning and not take responsibility for the rise in COVID cases in Delhi. Uh, yes, Afrida rightly pointed out that only one uh, thing is not at all responsible for a uh, number of cases and also that what uh, for, for that purpose that what we can say that increase of pollution uh, in the national capital. There are multiple reasons. So that is the vehicular movement. We all know that uh, that it increases mm. every uh, day uh, and in fact uh, there remains in every day. Uh, uh, and in fact, a uh, whole year as well. Uh, <clears throat> but as far as the stubble burning is concerned, Delhi government is saying and in fact, they're claiming that uh, the primary reason is, uh, uh, and this is one of the main factors of increased pollution, is uh, the uh, stubble burning. Uh, as far as the, uh, and, 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 and we all know that because the pollution level is increasing, the number of corona cases are also increasing very much dependent on uh, and both both the things both the things are very much interlinked with each other uh, what uh, the uh, what the uh, uh, authorities and what uh, now the experts are saying that because uh, the uh, there is uh, the climatic condition uh, people are also coming on the on the ground and people are also coming on the streets in huge number there is overcrowding as well uh, and during that time uh, when uh, the uh, climatic condition is not at all suitable uh, at, and at that point when uh, there are number of cases, num uh, uh, the pollution level is increasing, so uh, definitely the, uh, the corona cases will also increase. As of now, what the Delhi government uh, has done uh, uh, that uh, as far as the pollution right. is concerned they have um, uh, uh, they have uh, uh, they are running various schemes but that is not all coming on the ground 
uh, as uh, and what we are learning from our sources from the Delhi government that uh, in the coming days or or after soon after the Diwali, uh, there will be some strict measures will be taken by the Delhi government uh, uh, that may they that they may restrict many things. Remember, uh, the High Court has also pulled up the Delhi government that why they have eased everything, and definitely this is one of the reason and one of the cause of the concern that number of cases are increasing. 104 uh, deaths have already been uh, happened in the national yes. capital, and this is the alarming uh, rate of uh, uh, the cases, and this is highest uh, since the corona came uh, in the national capital. So, so definitely Del Delhi government need to think about it, and D with the help of the DDMA, uh, uh, they are going to implement uh, some strict mm -hmm. measures so that uh, they could uh, ease down some of uh, the some some corona cases in the coming days. Back to you. Okay, right. Thanks, Alok, for that uh, update and for bringing us uh, uh, up to speed with the ground realities that's happening right now. Uh, I would like to, in fact, uh, welcome Dr. Sanjeev Bagai joining us this afternoon, chairman of Nephron Clinics, and also Reena Gupta, spokesperson of the Aam Admi Party. Uh, I would, of course, address those entire, those entire questions that Alok raised and plus what the High Court earlier uh, pulled up the Delhi government for with Reena Gupta. But before that, Dr. Sanjeev Bagai, uh, you know, we know what's happening. Now we need to tell the residents of Delhi, what can they do about this? Now, even if you have your mask on, you have your hand hygiene in place and you maintain distance, you still need to breathe. Now with this, if this is the level of pollution, and even if we take the chief minister's word for it, that that is the reason why the COVID numbers have increased, what can the residents do to protect themselves under the circumstances? Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, viewers. Uh, if you just allow me just a couple of minutes because I want to state and uh, mention two or three of very, very latest uh, medical scientific studies which have been published in international journals, which will clear the air uh, in, in great depth with regards to pollution, COVID right. and oncoming winter. Now, we know that the COVID numbers are increasing. There are a variety of facts, but I'll base my mm -hmm. initial part of my discussion on two published studies, which one is in uh, Scientific American and the second is in Science Direct. Uh, they've done this study across nine countries in different parts of the world, across 357 cities. And what it states is that with every one microgram of PM 2.5, which is increasing with diesel and with pollution uh, uh, expose into the atmosphere, the risk of contacting COVID increases by 9.4% and three times increased risk of admission and likewise three times increased risk of death. They've also mentioned on scientific basis that the PM 2.5 causes what we call as oxidative stress on a particular alveolar cell type 2, which actually kills the alveolar cells and makes it more vulnerable to attack by COVID. We also know that it's published now that globally PM 2.5 causes 15% increase in COVID incidence globally and Asia, especially India, has an incidence of 27% increase. So that's with regards to the direct impact of what pollution is doing with COVID. In winter now, and this being the first winter of COVID entering right. into a, a cold environment with, with this respiratory pandemic, decreasing temperatures and relative change in humidity will cause the COVID to increase almost 19 times more. And we know that the virus is going to be suspended for a much longer duration of time and for a greater length in terms of the distance which this airborne disease mm -hmm. as micro can travel. The other last important point which I would like to mention is that there are a lot of genetic studies in very detailed gene sequencing which have been done. And there are a particular type of variations of mutations which are taking place, which makes COVID more uh, susceptible uh, uh, to attack the human cells as far as the host is concerned. What can we do? As a society, there are three very, very important carry-home messages of it. One is go out only if it's a must. Pollution is an ongoing okay. event, annual basis, but this year we need to be specifically careful because of COVID, pollution, and other respiratory infections like H1N1, which we call as the common influenza flu. The second important point is do not forget to wear a mask. If mm -hmm. you don't gear up, if you don't mask up, we are asking for problems. We are asking for trouble for ourselves. So I think mask is very important. And in this, I would like to mention that now we know yes. that 
82% of this airborne infection happens through the nose. I'm repeating it again. There are new receptors called as NRP receptors in the nose. We were talking for the last seven months of what we call as ACE2 receptors, which are in the lungs. But the main uh, impact of this COVID-19 is through the nose and 82% transmission happens through the nose. Please cover the nose, viewers. Please cover the nose and the mouth. The mask is not a social decorative piece for your face. It serves a great purpose not only to prevent you from COVID, it prevents you from transmitting this infection to others and it also will save you greatly with regards to the pollution, especially the gas and the particulate matter. And lastly is, as far as the winter is concerned, keep your good hygiene on in terms of hand washing. Try to eat as much as home. Do not expose yourself to outside food. Do not go to very close and crowded areas. Be careful of festivities. Festivities and joyous occasions are very important in our life. But this year, winter, pollution and COVID are more important. Yes. We will have more festivals in years to come. Protect yourself this year. Protect your near and dear ones. Keep safe. Right. Dr. Bagai, thank you so much for that important, uh, you know, advisory to the citizen. And we have said this time and again on Mirror now that the citizens have to also uh, exercise caution and take preventive measures. So uh, no one, uh, in fact, can take away from the fact that a huge responsibility lies with the citizen. And Dr. Bagai has helped us understand how and where we can help in reducing this problem. But I want to go across now to Reena Gupta. Uh, as you heard, uh, Reena Gupta, that there is a direct correlation between pollution and the rise in COVID cases. Mr. Chief Minister addressed the media today talking about how stubble burning is the main reason. But I want to, but then he has not responded to any of the questions that the Delhi High Court raised and asked of your government. For instance, the Delhi government has asked why has the uh, Kejriwal government relaxed norms in such a critical situation. I'll give you an example. The, the buses are running full capacity. You heard Dr. Bagai say how dangerous it is in an enclosed space. Prolonged exposure, that's a very high risk situation. Is the government not aware of all these things that you have relaxed the norms, right, left and center, malls and markets are being thronged by people in Delhi? So the government is aware of the situation. It is being monitored at the highest level, at the level of the chief minister every day. He's aware of the cases. He's monitoring the situation. Having said that, you know, it's it's very tricky uh, in a country like India. A lot of people, their livelihoods depend on them being able to go out every day. And so what we are saying is that you please go out if it's a question of your livelihood, only if it's very, very important. And if you're going out, please make sure that you're wearing a mask. You know, if, if, if almost 100% of us wear masks, right now I feel that maybe somewhere around 80% of the people are wearing the mask. And the 20% which are not wearing a mask, that's a huge number. And you can imagine that, you know, how virus spreads. So if all of us start wearing a mask and we, we practice what is called COVID-appropriate behavior, then the no, uh, number of Reena cases Gupta, will, you are highlighting the issues, the, the uh, measures that the citizens should take, which we have already dealt with. I want you to talk about what the government can do and is it doing enough? That is the part I want you to address, especially in the light of the questions raised by the Delhi High Court. Let's focus on that, please. Yes, the government is doing everything it can, both for COVID as well as for pollution. I, I can start by talking about pollution. This whole week, 40% of the pollution has come from stubble. So the contribution to PM 2.5 this whole week has been anywhere from 35 to 45%. And, you know, Delhi is the only government which has actually experimented with this biodecomposer. And we've written a letter to the central government and all to all the state governments saying that you know, this pollution of Parali can be taken care of and the cost is only 30 rupees per acre. The Delhi government is the only government which has shut down all of its power plants. 10% of the pollution in Delhi actually comes from the power plants in the neighboring area. See, air pollution, you have to identify all the factors which are in the air shed of Delhi and the air shed of Delhi is 300 kilometers. So unless we solve all of the problems of the 300 kilometers of, uh, of Delhi, 
there is only so much that the delhi government can do and we are doing and we will continue to do you know we've launched a green app where we are requesting all the citizens of delhi if you see anything which is causing pollution in your neighborhood be it dust be it garbage burning be it some polluting vehicle potholes anything please download the green app and please report that pollution we are using this app to crowdsource all pollution related problems so that they can be taken care of in a time bound manner and this diwali we will all need to really sacrifice the festivities right. we need to stay at home and be as careful as we can this is the stage of community mm. transmission you know as a community we'll have to be very very responsible no, you because didn't, you still didn't answer my question on why did you relax people. the norms why are schools reopened prematurely why no, are tourist open. spots open about? in delhi why is it business as no, usual because open. somewhere you can no, always set a limit open. for a footfall that who is responsible for enforcement who is responsible for implementation open, of covid protocols i will come back to you reena gupta let me go across to my colleague and it will help you also get a perspective tanima is with us uh, from the mumbai newsroom to uh, and she has a covid tracker to tell us uh, how things have worsened over time tanima that's right in fact let's take a look at the numbers which clearly seem to be the biggest headache for the delhi government as we have been mentioning that it is the spiraling number of cases of deaths related to covid which has in fact become the main point of concern not just for the government but also for the citizens if you can just take a look we've tracked it from the point of june 16th which was the last time that delhi had seen the highest daily covid deaths case load that was at 93 on 16th of june after that you can see going through the months of july august there was a steady decline from 81 to 22 it dropped to 22 at a point when delhi seems to have been doing relatively well but following that you can see there's a steady rise up to 48 by mid end september by end of october it was at 54 and now almost double that number within just two or just two odd weeks in uh, uh, you know mid, we are in the middle of november then you can see that it's the highest covid death toll that delhi has seen through the entire pandemic it was not just over the months of uh, uh, you know the easing up of co- uh, the restrictions that we can see despite the same number of testing that delhi has been doing since september now the number of cases which delhi is getting is far more and the death toll also is far higher we also have another statistics here in front of us which is basically the uh, the spike in death rate so that is the fatality rate as far as covid cases are concerned in delhi that we are looking at If, again we've tracked it for the past uh, from october to uh, beginning uh, like to some the some days of october we have taken to yes. the last few days of november where you can see uh on the 11th and 12th of october mm-hmm. it was around 0.99 and 1.03% and now it has of course uh you know it has gone up to around 0.95% so there seems to be a steady rise in that as well so clearly the fact that there has been an increase in uh, the cases yes. that also has in fact led to a problem in uh, you know in delhi that we can see as far as the fatality rate or death rate and death cases are concerned and that seems to be the topmost concern of uh, citizens in delhi at the moment yes hmm. Yes Dr Bagai uh, would you like to uh, come in on this the issue of the mortality rate which is one of the very important parameters across the globe it is looked at uh, as one of the indicators of the severity of corona virus uh, and in in the in those terms you know delhi is uh, at the moment the last figure that we checked in the last 24 hours 104 fatalities which would indicate that critical patients are probably succumbing to the virus uh, there again one would question whether medical facilities in critical care is enough what has been your observation in this regard a very important question uh, and keeping my answer completely a political just on medical scientific facts uh, it's very easy for anyone uh, in in the society to actually yes. criticize the but i want to put on record that as far as the delhi state and ncr they uh, have performed right through in the last 8 or 9 months uh, having said that it's been a humongous task we have not done bad i would say mm-hmm. we were fairly well uh, in terms of uh, testing contact tracing isolation uh, okay. personal phone calls to every patient on every day during the infectivity period it's not an easy task Uh, and i want to compliment the the health setup in uh, setup from the delhi government to track each and every patient each and every test um, to give home uh, isolation 
facilities, including pulse oximeter, yes. oxygen supplies, ambulance and things. Now, coming to the present fact, as far as the mortality is concerned, I will still not put any alarm bells. I would simply state that for every positive patient, there is almost an 80 to 90 percent asymptomatic load in the society. So if you look at what we call as the corrected case fatality road, it will be a lot lesser than what is being picked up right now. We cannot test the entire city. We can't test the entire country. But for every positive, there will be a 80 to 90 percent people in the society who may be asymptomatic carriers. The second is in the winter now what we are seeing is there is something for what the viewers must understand is there is something which is known as the immunity axis tilt. So if you have in, to put it in a very, very uh, simplistic manner, if you have a good okay. immunity of B cells and T cells and your tilt is towards the protective cells, mm -hmm. your memory cells, you will be well protected. If your tilt is towards the severity, that means your immunoglobulin load is low or your T cells are not functioning that well, then your severity will be more. This often happens in the viral shifts and drifts, especially in the winter months in the respiratory pandemic. But my, my last advice which I would like to give is work from home, stay at home, celebrate from home, use technology, use the platforms to reach out to people. There is no need in the next two or three months in winter, especially in a polluted city, to be venturing out. This is not a time for celebrations, not a time for socializing, not a time for parties. Mm. We will have enough time of that next year. Let's put our heads together. Let's help the government now. I think health right. is never a state subject or a central subject. Health, mm. I've always said, is an individual subject. Unless and until each one of us carry the message, we are messengers of this message to a wide host of society. If we give the correct message, I'm pretty sure we will gain the last surge of this in this winter too. That's a very matured approach, Dr. Bagai. I hope people are listening and paying heed to this. And coming from you, uh, I really respect the way you put it so that, you know, people should understand there will be a time for festivities, like you said. But this is just not the time. This is the time to exercise abundant caution. Now, we've been saying that this is a dual challenge, Reena Gupta. But to my mind, there is that there are at least four challenges that Delhi is faced with. There is pollution, there is the festivities around, there is coronavirus, and there is the lowering temperatures, which Dr. Bagai also explained to us how that is also another culprit in helping the spread of the virus. I would also give you a credit, at least in terms of the testing rate that Delhi, of course, is, is quite substantial with 60,000 testing done per day, 2.8 lakh per million is the testing done, which is, of course, among the highest in the country. And a positive, uh, the recovery rate also is high. But at the same time, questions still remain, uh, Ms. Gupta, about whether the government is only playing a catch-up game. The government is not proactive enough. Where is the forward planning and preparedness? There should have been some uh, preemptive steps taken. I mean, Diwali happens at this time every year. It was a known fact. You know, um Delhi government is one of the most proactive governments and uh, and you just just adding on to what Dr. Bagai was saying, the Harvard University actually did a, an international study where they documented uh, things that could be learned from all over the world and Delhi's home isolation model, which, you know, I can say uh, was pioneered by the Delhi government. It has been cited at one of the best practices for the countries to emulate all over the world. Having said that, you know, we are not stopping at, at anything. We went to court to reserve beds in the private hospitals. We've just launched a new app where poor people who, who are in home isolation and if they need to go to the hospital, they can just uh, lock from the app, call a vehicle, an e-vehicle will come free of cost, take them from home isolation to the hospital and bring them back. So, you know, Delhi is the only government which actually has a website dedicated to Corona. From this one website, Delhi Fights Corona, you can get all the data, which is the closest testing center, which is the closest hospital, how many beds are available, whom do you need to call, where do you need to call for the ambulance. So the government has actually been very, very proactive. But, you know, as citizens of Delhi, we really need to help the government to make sure that the system in Delhi does not get burdened with too many patients. So as Dr. Bagai said, let's stay at home. Let's let's really 
I have a very very quiet and um, quiet and calm Diwali this time. You know, there'll be many more Diwalis in our lifetimes, but this time we really need to be yes. very very responsible citizens and stay at home. Right. So there's a consensus, at least in that, Reena Gupta and Dr. Sanjeev Bagai both making a point very emphatically that we have to exercise restraint. This is the time to actually help the government to help us. That is an important point. I think that's the biggest takeaway from the discussion today. Thank you so much, Dr. Sanjeev Bagai and Reena Gupta for joining the conversation this afternoon. And that's it for now. News and updates continue on the other side. Stay with us.